That's three of them that won't deliver. Genitors as well? Yes. Didn't they give any reason either? Apparently we are considered a bad credit risk. By all of them? Well, it's around. Everything all right, are you? Yes, thank you, Jan. Good. Why? Who? Who's spreading it around? I don't know. Oh, dear. Now, I'll make us some coffee. I don't need coffee. I need help. I'm sorry. In Rome, there was a man. I met him at the Valentino show on the last day. He, uh, wanted me to stay. Well, actually, he wanted more than that. I may be your mother, dear, but these things are not a complete mystery to me. <sighs> no. Right. Well, he tried to chat me up. He wanted to take me back to the company flat. The company being Gianetto. Good Lord. He was an accountant or something. And when I refused him, he threatened to show me just how small a name I am in this business. I'm beginning to wonder whether he might be behind all this. What was his name? John Soames. Means nothing to me. Well, of course it doesn't. What the hell am I going to do? I've got no clothes in the shop to sell and no line of my own on the stocks. Jan, you do know there's a way out of this, don't you? What? Edward Freer. No. Oh, don't be so cantankerous, darling. Edward could probably restore the status quo overnight. No. Why not? Because I would have to tell him I thought John Soames was responsible. And why is that so bad? Because I'm not sure he is. And Edward wouldn't bother to stop to find out. We had an argument when I got back from Rome. He jumped to conclusions. He is a very jealous man. Well, he has nothing to be jealous of. Or has he? No, Mother. Then tell him. Because while you're having these finer feelings about this Soames person, your business is running out of things to sell. Yes, I know, I know. Well, as far as stocks are concerned, I may have an idea that might give us a bit of breathing space. Oh. Uh -huh. Anything else, John? Yes. Yes, there's one item which may amuse you. Sarah Foster. Kent Masters' partner. That's right. She came to me the other day and wanted finance for herself. Uh, to get that marina that Charles is after. On oh, Guernsey. <laughs> What's so special about it, John? Well, uh, she wants it because Masters wants it. Masters wants it because Charles wants it. And God alone knows why Charles wants it. But you will keep him informed. I mean, I really do want his first month back in the ring to be trouble-free. Well, I'm hardly likely to favour Arthur Ken, am I? And as for Mrs. Foster, I uh, don't share your enthusiasm for women in the marketplace, as you know. Or is it my enthusiasm for one particular woman in the marketplace? I trust all is well between you and Mrs. Harvard. I found myself wishing I was 20 years younger a few days ago. First time it's really bothered me. Why? I'm in love with a woman who could have suitors of her own age lined up from here to the main gate. Edward, 40 years is a long friendship. It gives us certain rights with each other. I don't want to talk about it, John. Sorry I mentioned it. Oh, come on, Edward. I know late marriages are very fashionable these days, but marriage and business do not mix, and they never have. You're behind the times, John. It's the perfect cocktail. That's a very masculine point of view, Edward. Does Mrs. Howard share it? Let me get this straight, darling. You want me to visit as many boutiques as I can and buy up a selection of their stocks? That's right. Take the car. Well, we're not going to make any profits, are we, if we buy retail? We may even lose money. Well, I haven't got much choice, have I, Mother? As you said yourself, I've got to keep the shop supplied or I might as well close them. But why not buy cash from our suppliers? We can use the profits from the sale. Not enough. I see. So, how am I supposed to manage? Use the Periplus checkbook. By the time the checks are presented, I'll have enough money in the account to cover them. And where's that money supposed to come from? Mother, are you going to do this for me or not? Off the top of your head. 
What's your opinion of Sarah Foster? Of all the women I know, Charles, she's definitely not your type. She and Ken Masters have a long-running love-hate relationship, don't they? Mm -hmm. Where do they stand at the moment? Polite hatred. This is the development I was telling you about. Oh. Now, the last thing I want is that Ken Masters should get there ahead of us. Lancres. Yes, Guernsey. It's an exclusive and almost bankrupt marina just outside St. Peterport. Any problems? There could be. Our Mrs. Foster holds most of the cards. You see, Lancres is privately owned. And Masters are sent her ahead, presumably, to soften the owner up. Oh, that sums up the Masters' business style rather well. Oh, yes, quite. The trouble is that in this case, it seems to be working. To all intents and purposes, Sarah Foster can have Lancrest for the asking. Gerald told me she's even made a private approach to Sir John Stevens for a loan. Good for her. Listen, Avril, we've got to come up with some ideas. Beat Foster and Masters at their own separate little games. Perhaps we should offer her a position at Relton. On the condition that she brings her goodwill at Longcrest with her. Would she take it? I think she could be persuaded. Mr. Howard, sir. Ah, Tom. Can I offer you some tea or a drink, perhaps? No, let's get down to business. The America's Cup project. Oh, yes. Goes well, I trust. You know damn well it doesn't. The whole thing's turning into a farce. It's bad enough that you think yourself able to match designers to specific jobs. He who pays the piper. Now you're suggesting that we steal ideas from our competitors. <laughs> Don't be so old-fashioned, Tom. It's accepted practice at world-class racing. But not in my yard. And I don't want to work for anybody who stoop to this kind of practice. Now there's the software and all the work I've completed so far. You're quitting. You've decided to let me down on the strength of a little nose. We're else. obviously not speaking the same language. I call it stealing. I don't take very kindly to being let down. Me neither. People who play fast and loose with me usually live to regret it. Call me tomorrow. What for? We've nothing more to talk about. Afternoon, Jack. Oh, afternoon, Bob. Now listen, we'll be needing to lay out the cabin soon, so you'll have to decide which plan we're using, the lightweight or the heavy. I haven't decided yet, Bob. And we'll need to know which engine she's going to take by the end of the week. I mean, we're that far on. What's one more day, Bill? It's no good talking like that. We've got a real winner on our hands date there, but, but she'll be no damn good without an engine. What do we do? Tell her lads to fit Rollocks meantime. This is because you've won some money, innit? You've no need to get your finger out now, because you're flush. Hey, you haven't told anybody, have you? No, of course I haven't. Yeah. It's true about what I'm saying, innit? <sighs> hey, you... Hey, you're not feeling so good. No, rotten. Oh, well... Uh... Oh, well, I'm sorry, Jack. I mean, yeah. I... I didn't know. Yeah, but... well, there you are. That proves it, doesn't it? I mean, when people ask you how you are, they don't mean it, do they? When you say you're lousy, it throws them. Well, what is wrong then, Jack? Uh, stress built. Oh, for God's sake, not that as well. Swallow your pride. Show it to young Emma. Get her to work it out on her computer. Not stress on Orcadium, Bill. Stress on my carcass. Oh, you're not starting to worry about your health at this late stage, are you? Yeah, well, it's a ticker, Bill. I mean, I keep taking these things, thinking it's just wind. But they don't shift it. It's worse at the end of the day, too. Well, what's the quack say? Doctors? What do I want with bloody doctors? <laughs> 